Good morning. Buenos dias. Bonjour. Bonjour. Guten Morgen. To all, wherever in the world you may be. In all things, we begin with a recognition of the omniscient, omnipresent, and eternal source of our being. The one God who is above, below, beside, in front of, and behind us in all our actions. We recognize that this God is our Heavenly Father, who prepares the way for us, His children. The laws of mind that He lays down is for our enrichment and fulfillment as obedient children to His precepts. We, the unique manifestations of divine love, recognize that we are spiritual beings on an earthly journey, and we give thanks for our lives and the lives of our loved ones Indeed, the lives of everyone. We pledge to use the gifts and talents with which we have been blessed to the advantage of mankind and this, our beloved Church. And if I may use the words that I employ in another dispensation, let me end by saying, may our labors thus be done in order, be conducted in peace and closed in harmony. I release these words knowing that they are fulfilled, and I give thanks that it is so, and so it is. My talk today is entitled, and I quote, What has the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living done to make me a good father? Before I begin, let me take this opportunity to say a wonderful and wonderful and happy Father's Day to all the fathers within the sound of my voice as well as to all the women who made them the fathers that they are. May your days be long and happy upon the earth, and may all your good wishes come true. When asked by Reverend Ann Shan to speak on this topic for our virtual service, which is a live stream of our love stream, of course the first answer that came to my mind was, nothing, no matter what the title is. Don't get too excited. Because the English language is a marvelous bit of engineering, and I will expound on that thought in just a minute. The second thought was, don't ask me, ask my children. So that is what I proceeded to do in a roundabout sort of way. The logical premise on which to build such a talk is that I am indeed a good father. Asking me is therefore fraught with arriving at a wrong conclusion give my closeness to the subject, and therefore the possibility of me exhibiting a strong bias towards the subject, i.e. the topic, and the subject, i.e. me. But first, a bit of history, as to my rather queer first response. Bear with me. It is a bit long, but bears telling. I was raised as an infant into childhood in Franklin Town, which is in Kingston 60 at number 24 Cambridge Street. My mother was a teacher at Providence Primary School, and my father was by then a factory supervisor at Your Brothers Limited, a company which manufactured, among other things, terrazzo tiles. He had previously been a teacher in St. Catherine, and then a police detective, stationed in various parishes of Jamaica. Indeed, when a telegram was sent to him proclaiming my arrival, he was stationed in Savannah Lamar, which is in Westmoreland. In Franklin Town, my initial introduction to formal churching, I recall as being sent to Sunday school at Franklin Town Church of God. It struck me as odd that the only time any of my parents visited said institution was for a funeral. But this being the early 60s, I kept that opinion to myself. The school where my mother taught was affiliated with the Methodist Church, and pretty soon we, and I don't mean the royal we, I mean the whole family, started attending Wesley Methodist Church on Fleet Street in downtown Kingston. Where is this going to be asked? Patient lads and lasses, patients. My father was raised in the country, old works in the Watermount District of St. Catherine, and when young, he was engaged in climbing a coconut tree to the private of his bounty. In order to safeguard his much beloved cap, which he was very fond of, he had placed it at the base of said tree. After successfully completing his mandate, he donned his beloved headwear. 
Unbeknownst to him, however, a scorpion had taken temporary shelter in the camp. And being rather annoyed by being so rudely awakened from its slumber, did what annoyed scorpions are wont to do in slumber. Long story short, my father developed a bald spot at the site where he was stung, and also developed quite serious headaches as a consequence. I can still see him, eyes closed, standing at Kimbo, with two fingers on his right hand, gently massaging his temple to rid himself of the molestation. I believe it was those headaches that led my father on a spiritual quest where a medical one had failed. Ah, we seem to be getting closer to the matter at hand. I have never asked, and it was therefore never answered, why my father took to attending some, in my young opinion, strange meetings in Harper Tree at something called Talk Age. The following description, which I recently unearthed, I owe to two very dear friends and constant companions, Mr. Google and Ms. Wikipedia, and I quote, Talk Age is an international Christian movement. The name is an abbreviation for Talbot House. Talk signifying the letter T in the signals spelling alphabet used by the British Army in World War I. A soldier's rest and recreation center named Talbot House was founded in December 1915 in Belgium. It aimed to promote Christianity and was named in memory of Gilbert Talbot, son of Edward Talbot, then Bishop of Winchester, who had been killed in July 1915. The founders were Gilbert's elder brother, Neville Talbot, then a senior army chaplain, and the Reverend Philip Thomas Clayton. Talbot House was styled as an every man's club, where all soldiers were welcome, regardless of rank. And uh, it was an alternative to the debauched recreational life of the town. In 1920, Clayton founded a Christian youth center in London, also called Top Age, which developed into an interdenominational association for Christian social service. The original building at Popper Inn has been maintained and really redeveloped as a museum and tourist venue. Branches of Top Talk age were established in many countries around the world. Curiously, there's an article in the Daily Gleaner of the September 1, 1966, which mentions Talk age in reference to one James N. Russell, and which states, and I quote, it was the balance of seriousness and gaiety in his temperament which gave him his special charm. His traits of character were strongly marked and he would have lent himself to caricature, but for this balance, it was connected, perhaps, as was his spirit of service with his experience of comradeship in World War I. It is significant that he was interested not only in the Jamaican Legion, but in that most curious social product of World War I, Dark Age. Anyway, I digress. I am totally uncertain if our beloved Temple of Light developed out of this tough age, but pretty soon my father became a founder member of this ultimately transformed church. So that is where the foundation upon which my nascent fatherhood was laid. And now, after that nothingness with which I began, at its inception, our church was known as the Temple of Light, Church of Religious Science. So I became a member by association with my father of that church from an early age. And you may therefore correctly state that that is where my religious and spiritual character was forged. In his book, Living the Science of Mind, Ernest Holmes has this to say, and I quote, The science of mind is intensely practical because it teaches us how to use mind principle for definite purposes. This affirmation, along with the foundation laid by my father in introducing me to the science of my teachings, have been the cornerstone upon, the, um, upon which the relationship with my children have been built. In our declaration of principles, it is stated inter alia, and I quote, 
We believe the ultimate goal of life to be a complete emancipation from all destroyed in every of every nature. And that is a goal that is sure to be attained by all. End quote. That has always been a guiding principle for me. In his book, The Science of Money, Ernest Holm defines masculine as, and I quote, the assertive principle of being, the self-conscious, self-propelling power of spirit, the projective principle of life, impregnating the universal soul with its ideas and concepts, end quote. With that definition in mind, and bearing the word, bearing the word impregnating uppermost in my thought, I took the liberty of asking the mother of my children for a few things she could find to say about her, my relationship with her children, as she is fond of calling them, as well as inquiring of my children what their thoughts on the matter were. What follows is in their own words. Mother, you believe in your children, supporting them to death. You have always sought to teach them good values. You involve yourselves yourself when you find in their lives, and you want them involved in yours. You always insisted in doing things as a family, and taught them a good sense of family. You set good examples by your actions. Our truth, our, our truth teaching states that nothing happens by chance. All is in accordance with law, and the law of God is as omnipresent as is the spirit of God. Without the basis and foundation of the teachings of the science of mind, those principles attributable to me and expounded by my former wife would hold no sway. They allowed me to set the stage on which thought was manifested into action with good intent. The book, The Science of Mind, states that the thoughts of the parents influence the child. My daughter had this to say, teaches lessons passes on lessons learned from the Temple of Light, affection and encouragement, passing on the power of the mind and how you think. You are a good dad because I believe that I can do anything I put my mind to. Gentle discipline, but spirit around for the child had to be implemented in dire situations where my future character was in peril. You are a good dad because you taught me right from wrong. Open bracket, specifically not to lie. Close bracket. And this bears diver, um, a little diversion from the script. That quotation of my daughter, um, this back to she was probably about seven, eight, nine. She was at um, Andrew's prep. And we used to take her from school to the office um, and await taking them home and taking her home. One day she was at the office and she did something. And I asked her, where well, did you do such a thing? I knew she did it. She knew that she did it, but she lied. After a second time, when did you do this? Did you do this? She prevaricated again. <laughs> so I took off my bed and I hit her once. And I saw those lovely eyes of my daughter looking up at me as if to say, Daddy, why are you doing this? Needless to say, to her credit <laughs> and to my credit, I've never hit any of my children again. Um, back to the script. As a daughter, he taught me to expect men to invest meaningfully in long-term relationships. You are fiercely loyal and taught me what to expect from other men and people in general. Protector and freedom, respects his children and mother of his children. I was able to become very independent and a happy adult because I was protected but also respected and trusted. My son had this to say. One of the earliest lessons my father taught me was that life is a journey, not a destination. As a young child, I never understood fully what he meant, but with age and experience, I gained a little of understanding as to what he meant. Life has its ups and downs, and my father helped me to understand that the downs don't define you, but make you better. An early childhood memory of my father was my friend saying, your dad is so cool. <laughs> and always I felt lucky to have a father that I could relate to in a real way. He didn't forget what it was like to be young. And we figured it out. 
He allowed me room to make mistakes and was there to talk to me when they were made. My father was a good example to me of how to show love and appreciation for others. Whenever we see each other, we hug as if we were in a part players. We embrace each other with love, regardless of where we are. And it has been a huge impact on my life and how I show love for others. Our relationship has evolved over the years and went through ups and downs, but I could not be more proud of the man I was able to call my father. Again, end quote. Again, referring to the book The Science of Mind on the subject of evolution, it states, and I quote, the aim of evolution is to produce a man slash woman who, at the objective point of their own self-determination, may completely manifest the inner life of the spirit. Even the spirit does not seek to control us, for it lets us alone to discover ourselves. It has been this driving force that my father instilled in me because of the teachings of the science of man, and which in turn I was led, led to impart and imprint upon my offspring. To God be the glory, knowing that God dwells in all of us. None of these fine sounding words would have been possible without the initial foundation and the superstructure raised on the principles of science of the mind. I give thanks that it is so, and it is so. Namaste.